Hey everybody, welcome. This is the second video of our series of basic crypto concepts for beginners. Last time I gave a general overview about what is cryptocurrency. Today I'm focusing specifically on the topic of blockchain and what is blockchain. As always, if you do enjoy this video and find it helpful, please help us out by giving it a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. Also, speaking of comments, we're going to choose our three favorite comments to send a $10 trading bonus to. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and comment something interesting or funny. Maybe you'll be a winner. All right, let's jump in. A blockchain is a collection of databases physically spread across different locations around the world. It's also a public ledger that stores information digitally and is maintained by a network of computers or nodes. Most cryptocurrencies rely heavily on blockchain technology for two core purposes. The first is to help secure the networks and the transaction records. The second is maintaining decentralization, which allows money to be transferred without an intermediary. Distributed ledger technology, or DLT, is considered the parent technology of blockchain. The infrastructure and protocols that form DLT allow for a digital system where users and systems could record, access, and validate information securely and immutably, or unchangeably. A digital system built with DLT is decentralized, as the information is stored across multiple entities in different locations. The security and immutability of the system are achieved via public and private keys, which act as cryptographic signatures. The private and public keys are strings of randomized numbers and letters. The public key is tied to the private key, and serves as the public address that other users can see and utilize to send crypto to the user. The private key, which every user should protect carefully, works like a password used for decrypting and encrypting the wallet, as well as signing transactions and proving wallet ownership. While blockchain technology is sometimes referred to directly as distributed ledger technology, a blockchain is actually just one type of distributed ledger. No one knows for sure how many blockchains exist around the world, but it's safe to say the number is growing as blockchain technology is increasingly adopted. All blockchains can be categorized depending on their restrictions. Public blockchains are permissionless and decentralized, meaning anyone can join and become a node. This type of blockchain is primarily involved in exchanging and mining cryptocurrency. Examples of public blockchains include Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Private blockchains are permissioned blockchains managed by a single entity. This entity determines which user can be a node. An example of a private blockchain is Ripple. Consortium blockchains are a hybrid form of public and private blockchains. This type of blockchain is managed by one or a group of entities wherein each member owns a portion of the network. An example of a consortium blockchain is Quorum, which is developed by JP Morgan. Many of the technologies that make up the blockchain were in development long before cryptocurrency was born. A preliminary version of blockchain was first described in 1991 by Stuart Haber and W. Scott Stornetta. The two scientists were developing a cryptographically secure chain of blocks. However, the person, or perhaps people, who invented blockchain in its current form is only known by a pseudonym, Satoshi Nakamoto. In 2008, Nakamoto released a white paper detailing the principles behind blockchain and the first cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. The paper conceptualized blockchain as a public ledger that would facilitate Bitcoin transactions without the need for intermediaries. A few years later, Nakamoto exited the scene and passed leadership on to the existing other developers. However, some developers felt that Bitcoin could not fully leverage the potential of blockchain technology. Among these developers was Vitalik Buterin, one of the founders of a new public blockchain launched in 2015 called Ethereum. The Ethereum team's biggest innovation was incorporating programs called smart contracts into the blockchain. Smart contracts automatically perform certain functions when a set of predetermined conditions are met eliminating the need for a third party to ensure enforcement. The implementation of smart contracts allowed blockchain technology to expand beyond currency applications and into financial applications and beyond. We'll dive deeper into Ethereum and smart contracts in a later video in the series. A blockchain's primary functions are to store information digitally and secure the data using cryptographic encryption. Many companies are developing and incorporating blockchain-based solutions into their products and services. Here are two major examples of applications of blockchain technology outside of cryptocurrency. Blockchain can be incorporated into a monitoring system for deliveries. If a problem occurs during transportation, the blockchain-based tracking system allows companies to quickly identify the problem source. For example, Walmart Canada utilizes a blockchain-based automated system to manage invoices from payments to third-party freight carriers. Blockchain can also be incorporated into financial services. 
Traditional financial institutions like banks only operate during business hours and may take days to settle some services due to a large number of transactions the institutions process. With blockchain technology, these institutions can process transactions within 15 minutes and operate 24-7. For example, JP Morgan utilizes blockchain technology to enhance fund transfers between banking institutions globally. In a blockchain, the information is grouped into blocks, which are data structures that have specific storage capacities. Once a block is filled, it is closed and linked back to the previously filled and closed block. New information is loaded into the next block, and the cycle repeats, forming a chain of blocks called a blockchain. This process of creating and adding new blocks to the blockchain is called mining. The data stored on the block is different depending on the type of blockchain and its use. For example, it could be transactions recorded about the sender, the receiver, and the transaction amount. But there are a few bits of information crucial to all blocks in all blockchains. When a block is created, it generates a random number called a nonce. The nonce generates a block header hash, a fingerprint that's unique to the block. If anything in the block is altered, its hash changes. The current block also contains the previous block's hash, which helps prevent tampering. When something does happen to a block, the hash changes. As a result, the following block no longer stores the previous block's hash, making all subsequent blocks invalid. An attacker would have to regenerate the hash of every invalid block. For enhanced security, blockchains also utilize consensus mechanisms to authenticate transactions on a distributed ledger. A consensus mechanism is an algorithm that requires nodes to work together and agree on the legitimacy of any transaction made on a blockchain. The most famous consensus mechanism is proof of work, which forces miners to spend a certain amount of energy to mine blocks. The reason for this mechanism is primarily to make the blockchain more secure by adding a cost to the mining. If there were no cost to mining blocks, then an attacker might be able to add so much false information that honest miners are unable to correct the attack before the attacker profits. Intentionally adding an energy cost makes it too expensive for an attacker to successfully complete an attack before other miners can correct it. The way proof of work adds energy cost is by requiring miners to expend computational power to solve a mathematical puzzle for each block. The mining software must continuously guess the solution to a puzzle until the correct one is found, which requires enough processing power to translate into a significant energy cost. The miner who guessed the right solution can then add their block to the chain and will receive a reward for their work. If an attacker tampers with one block, they would need to solve mathematical puzzles for all the following blocks, which would be essentially impossible due to the energy needed and the competition for mining rewards among all the other miners. As you probably suspect, there's much more to proof of work in terms of both how it works on the technical level and how it helps to secure the blockchain, but we can dig into that in another video. Other, more energy efficient mechanisms, such as the proof of stake model, have also been introduced as alternatives to proof of work. Proof of stake requires miners to put a certain amount of money in escrow in order to be allowed to mine blocks and comes with penalties for dishonest behavior. With the implementation of a consensus mechanism, even if an attacker successfully adds a malicious block, the block will need to pass verification. A blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network where the nodes will need to verify the block's validity before it gets appended to the chain. If the nodes discover a block is invalid, they can reject the block, and it will not be added to the blockchain. The cryptographically encrypted transaction records in a blockchain make it extremely difficult for attackers to alter the data. However, many users still wonder whether blockchains are immune to all malicious attacks. In reality, there are indeed some vulnerabilities, attacks, and mistakes that may affect a blockchain or cause a loss of assets. One of the most dangerous possibilities is a 51% attack, which can happen when a single node or group of nodes working together with over 50% of a blockchain's computational resources tries to take control. The attacker or attackers can perform malicious acts such as rewriting parts of the blockchain, reversing transactions, and stealing assets. 51% attacks become less likely the more widespread the mining of a blockchain is, and is therefore not much of a concern for large blockchains. Many security breaches happen due to human error. Common mistakes include the loss of private keys, transfers to the wrong address, and accidental installation of malware. However, poorly written smart contracts, codes, and programs associated with the system also provide attackers with possible weak points. For example, an attacker managed to target an accounting error built into Mono X Finance's software, stealing $31 million worth of tokens. So all in all, is blockchain safe? The answer is that properly built and maintained blockchains can be regarded as safe as far as the underlying system is concerned. 
but users still need to properly care for their electronic devices and practice due diligence to avoid common pitfalls. Here are a few tips to keep in mind. Always keep a copy of your keys, and keep that copy very secure, ideally not stored on a digital device that could be hacked. And never give anyone a copy of your private keys unless it's someone you know and trust with complete access to your wallet. Another way to keep yourself more secure in the crypto space is to learn about common crypto scams and attacks so that you can better avoid them. Furthermore, if you're just starting out, it's probably safest to only invest in the most reputable, biggest cryptos such as Bitcoin or Ethereum. But if you do want to diversify further, you should try to learn more about fundamental analysis so that you can get a better idea about the risks of the project. And as always, it's good to follow general investment advice such as never investing more than you're willing to lose. Speaking of investing in blockchain, considering blockchain is a technology that anybody can use, there's no way to directly invest in blockchain or blockchain technology. However, you can invest in cryptocurrencies that leverage blockchain technology by purchasing the cryptocurrency on an exchange like Femex. However, if the cryptocurrency market's volatility is too risky for your taste, you can buy shares of a cryptocurrency trust like Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or an exchange-traded fund. And people with a high tolerance for risk can also participate in things like initial coin offerings and launch pools where they purchase a new cryptocurrency currently in development in order to support the team. So in conclusion, blockchain technology has garnered a lot of attention in the past decade due to the increase in popularity of cryptocurrency. Furthermore, many big companies from Walmart to JP Morgan are incorporating blockchain systems to improve and secure existing products and services. Nonetheless, just because something uses a blockchain doesn't mean it's entirely safe from malicious attacks. Finally, when it comes to cryptocurrencies that use blockchain, remember that the market is still very volatile and filled with a lot of weak and even scam projects. So any investor or company interested in making blockchain-related investments should discern whether the potential rewards outweigh the current risks. As always, you have to make that decision for yourself. But if you are interested in cryptocurrency and new to it and want to learn more, you're in the right place. This is the second video in our series of crypto concepts for beginners. So if you want to continue learning more about the basics and building up your knowledge of the crypto space, stick around. We have more to come. To ensure that you don't miss it, I suggest you subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment something, and even share it with your friends. All right, that's all for this installment. Looking forward to see you next time. Bye.